Hi there, my Ego Pico friends! By the end of this digital art tutorial, you'll learn how to create vintage dividers as vector and pixel brushes in Affinity Designer version 2. I added a sketch to the description so you can practice. Feel free to download it. Begin by opening Affinity Designer and setting up your canvas. Lower the opacity of your sketch to make it easier to work with. Then, create a straight line down the center of the sketch to serve as your guide. Next, draw a small rectangle at the top of this line and center it. Add any gradient fill to this rectangle. This step ensures that you won't forget to flip the rectangle later. With the rectangle selected, go to the Symbols panel and click Create. If you don't see the Symbols panel, go to Window and tick Symbols. Drag the symbol you just created onto the canvas and flip it horizontally. This acts as your symmetry tool. Now, whatever you draw on the left side will be mirrored on the right. Using the pencil tool, start tracing over your sketch. Adjust the stroke width to your liking. If you need to make any changes, switch to the note tool to refine your curves. Once you're satisfied with the tracing, drag the curves into the symbol, positioning them just above the rectangle. Your curves will now be visible on both sides of the line. Since some elements, like diamond shapes in the center, don't need to be mirrored, you can place them directly without adding them to the symbol. Once you're done tracing, select all the curve layers, then go to Layer and click Expand Stroke. Combine all the layers that create your elements by selecting them and clicking Add at the top. Select both layers containing your elements and click Add to merge them into a single layer. Drag this layer out of the Symbols panel and delete the rest of the layers, including the symbols, the central line and the sketch. Before moving on to creating brushes, make a copy of your element and hide it. This copy will be used later to create a stamp brush without actually creating a brush. Scale down the artboard to the size of the element. Change the artboard color to black and the element color to white. Black will be transparent, white will be solid. Export this as a PNG file. In the brushes panel, create a new category and name it something like custom brushes. Choose new textured intensity brush and select your PNG file. If you see the brush weirdly stretched, just double click on it or click more at the top. Instead of stretch, choose repeat. Adjust the brush settings to your preference, such as size. If you have no stroke color selected before creating a curve, the curve will be automatically black. You can change the brush stroke color in the color panel. You can also add a gradient stroke color. Just remember to change the context menu to stroke, then click on the rectangle and choose gradient. You can also add noise to those colors for more texture. Change the element color back to black. Switch to Pixel Persona, right-click on the element and choose Rasterize. Export it as a PNG with a transparent background. In the Brushes panel, create a new category 
and add your PNG file as a new intensity brush. Adjust the brush settings to ensure full opacity and proper sizing. If you notice that the brush has low opacity, go back to the brush settings and at the bottom change wet edges to set wet edges off. This should give you a brush with a full opacity. In my case it didn't happen, but sometimes it does happen. You can also change the fill color of this brush. And if you single click, it will work as a stamp brush. For more flexibility, you can save your element into the assets panel. Make the hidden copy of your element visible again and add a gradient fill color. Adjust the handles if necessary and add noise or textures if you'd like to. Insert stock photos as textures. Adjust the vibrance. And choose the blending mode that you like. Save the element to the assets panel for easy access in future projects. Now that you have your vector and pixel brushes, as well as your symbols, it's time to create some designs. I'm going to start with a simple text design, change its font and color, then use the new pixel brush to add stamped elements. Experiment with the vector brush tool, adjusting the nodes to create your designs. Finally, drag elements from the symbols panel and customize their gradients or textures. And that's it! You've learned how to create vector and pixel brushes in Affinity Designer version 2. If you're looking for more tips to speed up your work in Affinity Designer, check out my other videos. I love hearing from you guys, so don't be shy and let me know in the comments what you would like to learn more about. See you in the next video. Ciao!